Once upon a time, storks were responsible for making and delivering babies from their headquarters in Stork Mountain. However, after a mishap occurred with one baby and a stork named Jasper, the birds, under the leadership of Hunter, changed their focus and began delivering packages for Cornerstone.com. The Stork Mountain headquarters was abandoned, and all operations were moved to the Cornerstone.com warehouse. When the mishap occurred, Jasper was set to deliver a baby, but he went crazy, wanting to keep her. In the midst of the commotion, the homing beacon, a device containing the baby's delivery address, broke, meaning she could no longer be delivered to her parents. Left with no choice, the storks decided to keep the baby with them until she turned 18. They named her Orphan Tulip. Under the care of the storks, Tulip grows into an enthusiastic young woman, and she does odd jobs for Cornerstone.com. Unfortunately, despite her best efforts, Tulip is quite clumsy, so whenever she tries to help, things end up badly, causing the company's stock and profits to fall. In the present, 18 years have passed, and Junior, Cornerstone's top delivery stork, has just delivered his one millionth package. Upon returning to the office, Junior is congratulated by other delivery storks. Another employee, a pigeon named Pigeon Toady, also congratulates him. Junior plans to celebrate with the other storks, but they all blow him off. Moments later, Junior gets summoned by Hunter, the CEO. Upon reaching Hunter's office, Junior is nervous, but he does his best to hide it. Hunter doesn't seem to notice as he's more focused on being mean to the tiny robins in his office. To make small talk, Hunter tells Junior that his decision to have his office made entirely of glass, even though birds can't see glass, is a power move. Eventually, Hunter informs Junior that at an upcoming store convention called StoreCon, he will be promoted to chairman, leaving his old position vacant. Hunter says that when he becomes chairman, Junior will be named boss. boss. But there is a catch. Tulip has just turned 18 and is fit to return to the human world. Hunter sees this as the perfect opportunity to get rid of her, so he tells Junior that before he's named boss, he has to fire Tulip. Eager to claim his promotion, Junior assures Hunter that he will fire Tulip immediately. He then heads out in search for the young girl. When Junior finds Tulip, she's attempting to help three flightless birds fly using her rocket-like inventions. This ultimately starts a fire in the factory, confirming that Tulip is quite problematic. Before Junior has the chance to fire Tulip, she informs him that it's her birthday. Now feeling guilty, Junior devises a plan to get rid of Tulip without firing her. Junior tells Tulip she has been promoted and she's now in charge of the letter sorting department. He takes her to a room beside the abandoned baby factory and tells her that the only requirement is that she must never leave the room. In the past, the letter sorting department was in charge of receiving requests for babies, but since the factory had been shut down, letters stopped coming in. At first, Tulip is excited about her promotion and promises to put in her all. However, she soon gets very bored since she has nothing to do. Elsewhere, a young boy named Nate Garner tries his best to get his parents' attention, but the couple pay him no mind, choosing instead to focus on their real estate company all day and all night. As a result, Nate feels sad and alone. When taking a drive with his parents, Nate sees a heartwarming exchange and decides that he wants a baby brother. He shares this with his parents, but they simply laugh it off. Refusing to give up, Nate finds an old leaflet from the time Storks delivered babies and sends them a letter requesting a baby brother with karate skills. Later that night, Nate wakes his parents up and excitedly tells them that the Storks are bringing him a baby brother, but they don't take him seriously. After ongoing the due process, Nate's letter lands in the letter sorting room, and Tulip is overjoyed. Despite being told not to leave the room, she heads out to deliver the letter. Upstairs, Junior tells Hunter he has taken care of the tulip problem. Hunter is pleased, and the pair discuss all the benefits Junior will enjoy when he is named boss on Monday. The conversation is cut short when alarm systems start to go off, showing that tulip is still on company grounds. Junior quickly disconnects the system without Hunter noticing and heads out to find tulip. Tulip is in the baby factory, about to put the letter in a machine when Junior finds her. He tries to stop her, but she puts it in anyway. Moments later, the two discover that Tulip put the letter in the baby-making machine instead of the letter box. Junior tries to stop the machine from processing the letter, even breaking his wing in the process. Unfortunately, his attempts are unsuccessful. And moments later, the machine pops out a baby girl ready to be delivered. Junior immediately goes into panic mode, knowing that if Ford gets out, Hunter will end him, 
and he will lose his promotion. After thinking things through, Junior and Tulip sneak the baby into Tulip's former office. They meet Pigeon Toady on the way, and although the pair act suspiciously, Pigeon doesn't think much of it. In Tulip's office, Junior says he will head out secretly, deliver the package, and return just in time from his promotion on Monday. But there is one problem. His wing is broken. The only other option is to make the trip using an aircraft Tulip built. At first, Tulip is skeptical, saying she built the craft for something else, but she eventually agrees to it. Since Junior is unable to fly the craft, Tulip tags along. As the craft takes flight, an unkempt-looking Jasper catches sight of Junior, Tulip, and the baby. He immediately starts tailing him. In the gardener home, Nate is making preparations for the coming of his new sibling. His parents notice this and try to tell him that storks no longer deliver babies, but he remains adamant. After a brief interaction, Nate is able to convince both his parents to join him in modifying the house in preparation for the baby. Mr. and Mrs. Garner do not believe that a baby will come, but they decide to seize the moment and have fun with their son. Back in Cornerstone.com's head office, Pigeon Toady notices that Tulip and Junior are missing. While searching for them, he finds baby powder. Immediately, the pigeon builds himself a flying contraption and goes to investigate. At first, the trip looks to be going well. However, Tulip, who is the pilot, gets distracted by the baby and ends up crashing the plane in an unknown location. Junior angrily lashes out at Tulip, blaming her for all the mishaps. Fed up, Junior breaks up the team and announces that he will deliver the baby himself. This hurts Tulip's feelings. Before he gets very far, Junior and the baby are kidnapped by wolves. The wolves kidnap Tulip as well. At first, the wolf pack, led by two wolves, intends to eat the baby, but they are soon smitten with a child so they decide to keep her and raise her as one of their own. Junior and Tulip devise a plan to trick the wolves, and it works. When the wolves least expect it, the pair grab the baby and make a run for it. The wolves give them a hot chase, but Junior and Tulip are able to escape using the crashed aircraft, which Tulip modified into a rubber raft. After getting as far away from the wolves as possible, Junior and Tulip start warming up to the baby. When Junior catches himself letting his guard down with the baby, he stabs the raft and declares that it's time to call it a night. Later that evening, Tulip asks Junior why he stabbed the raft, but he shrugs it off. She also asks him what he plans to do when he is named boss, but he has no idea. The conversation continues and the two let down their guards. Tulip confides in Junior about the real reason she built the plane. She tells him that she still has a piece of her broken homing beacon and that she intended to use the plane to find her family, but she changed her mind and sacrificed it to deliver the baby. Touched, Junior lets Tulip name the baby, and she calls her Diamond Destiny. In the end, the two agree that early the next day, they will head to a nearby port and jump on a ship to the baby's address. Diamond Destiny has trouble sleeping, so Junior and Tulip are forced to stay awake and watch her. The two seem to bond over the experience. True to his plan, Pigeon follows behind Junior and Tulip, trying to trace their steps. He finally confirms that they are indeed delivering a baby and immediately returns to Hunter with this news. As a reward for this information, Hunter promises Pigeon Toady the role of boss. To stop the delivery and capture Junior, Hunter instructs Pigeon Toady to change the delivery address on the baby's homing beacon. Yes! All right, let's go. We got a boat. The next morning, Junior and Tulip grab Diamond Destiny's homing beacon and embark on their journey to the port. The two are completely unaware of the change in the address. In the port, Junior and Tulip encounter several challenges. First, they are nearly caught by the security, and when they manage to escape, they are attacked by the wolves who have somehow managed to trace them. Junior and Tulip team up and try to avoid the wolves. In the process, Tulip has to guide Junior through a glass maze since birds can't see glass. Although they are successful, the pair are cornered by the wolves moments later. Before the wolves have time to act, Jasper swoops in and flies Junior, Tulip, and the baby to safety. When Jasper lands on the ship, Junior and Tulip are very panicky because they assume he wants to hurt them and the baby. Tulip still blames him for ruining her life. Eventually, Jasper is able to calm them down and get them to listen to his side of the story. He says that he did fall in love with baby Tulip, but he had no desire to keep her. Instead, he wanted to deliver her, but because her homing beacon broke, he could not. Consumed by guilt, Jasper says he dedicated his life to finding all the pieces of the broken homing beacon and is now missing only one piece. Excited, Tulip reveals that she has the piece and the homing beacon is reassembled, revealing Tulip's address. Tulip is beyond excited by the idea of meeting her real family, but she decides to stay and deliver the baby first. Junior, on the other hand, 
pushes Tulip to go, saying he will complete the delivery on his own. At first, Tulip refuses, but when Junior tells her he was supposed to fire her, this hurts her feelings, so she leaves with Jasper. Junior finally makes it to the address on the homing beacon, but it's a trap. So instead of the gardeners, he meets Hunter and Pigeon Toady there. Hunter takes the baby and hands her over to penguins, saying they will raise her until she's 18. Junior tries to protest, but Hunter has him tied up. Hunter, Pigeon Toady, and the penguins return to the headquarters of Cornerstone.com, with the baby leaving Junior tied up. Upon reaching her family's home, Tulip is too anxious to ring the doorbell. Before Jasper notices, she sneaks off. In the gardener home, the doorbell rings, and Nate is super excited, thinking it's the storks. Nate and his parents dash to the door only to see a police officer. The officer tells them to take down all the modifications they have made to their home in preparation for the baby because they are unsafe. Nate tries to explain that he's expecting a baby brother from the storks, but his parents cut him short. With heavy hearts, Mr. and Mrs. Gardner inform their son that no baby is coming because storks no longer deliver babies. Nate is heartbroken, and he begins to take down the decorations. After sneaking off, Tulip makes her way to the address on Diamond Destiny's homing beacon. There, she finds Junior tied up. Together, Junior and Tulip find a way to get back to Cornerstone.com headquarters. Upon getting there, the store convention is ongoing, and there are thousands of storks everywhere. The two manage to spot the baby and retrieve her from the penguins by working as a team. However, when it's time to leave, only one jetpack is available. This leads to an argument about who should have the jetpack. The argument gets loud, causing Junior and Tulip to blow their cover. When the storks see the baby, they immediately go after Junior and Tulip. Hunter is leading them up. Junior and Tulip run to the baby factory to seek shelter, and when they realize there is no way out, Junior activates the baby-making machine. As babies begin to pop out, the other storks are smitten, but Hunter loses it. Pigeon Toady tries to turn off the machine, but he ends up breaking it, causing it to pop out babies even faster. Hunter loses it and decides to destroy the factory with the babies and storks in it. He gets into a machine and prepares to wreak havoc, but things don't go as he planned. The machine falls with Hunter still in it. Thankfully, a bunch of wires break the fall. Robins, like the ones he used to maltreat in his office, spot Hunter in this situation. Immediately, Hunter orders the small birds to help him out, but instead, they do the opposite. Hunter ends up falling, and he takes the Cornerstone.com office with him, effectively putting an end to his evil reign over the company. With Hunter gone, Junior takes over leadership and declares that Storks will again deliver babies. Junior makes the trip to deliver Diamond Destiny, and Tulip accompanies him riding on Jasper's back. When they reach the gardener home, Nate is overjoyed to meet his baby sister. When all is settled, Tulip visits her family, and although this is their first meeting, they welcome her with open arms. Junior is also recognized as part of the family. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notifications, and leave a like and comment.